Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel where we are about to preview the final game of the um, the uh, Senior GAA Championships uh, this season. So we've got the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship final um, Saturday 5 o'clock Dublin Mayo. Um, I'm joined by Conor McKenna as always um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can uh, make, make a case for... Um, for uh, this being hopefully you know maybe maybe a good game to, to finish the championship maybe a, a test for the dubs as they as they go for um, they go to extend their record of uh, six in a row so tell me Connor is uh, do Mayo have a chance? I uh, did they have a chance all right they they certainly are in the game right with, with a fighting chance of, of winning they haven't won since 1951 but Dublin are certainly favourites I think that the Dublin team. It'll be interesting for them because this is probably the first real test they've probably going to face in this year's championship. You know what? Well, it might have been expected they might have had a few more, but look, I suppose realistically in hindsight, when you're looking at it, like uh, Dublin, we're always going to win the Leinster, so they're only ever two games away from the All Ireland, you know. And then, with no disrespect, when Cavan won the Ulster, Dublin, we're always going to beat them, barring an absolute miracle. Like so, they were only ever one game away from the All Ireland, really, you know. And I suppose if it was Kerry or Mayo, you would have probably, if you were looking to the other side of the draw, if you were looking at two teams that would probably be able to beat Dublin you would have said Kerry would have been the very first team and they completely flopped against Cork and probably the second one would have been Mayo but to be fair to Mayo they've been relatively consistent against Dublin over the last few years and only for a bad second half last year which probably put an embarrassing loss on the scoreline really and Mayo were two points up at half time against Dublin last year and Hartley should have been a wee bit more ahead and I think Dublin kind of bombarded them in the first 12 minutes the second half and that was it then that was that was Dublin true but but um, it's hard to know Jerry this weekend I I think Dublin would probably just have too much room to be honest with you. I think Dublin, it's De- it, <coughs> excuse me, there, it, it's Desi Farrell's first um, real test in the championship. I think the league, if you were going through the league, especially before the lockdown, Dublin didn't do well in the league. Really, well, they did okay. They kind of, I suppose, they came second in the league as it ended in hindsight, but to their own standards, they didn't really play flamboyant football. But Mayo got relegated in the league, so it'll be interesting to know if Dublin win this, still have won an All-Ireland without beating a team who's going to be in Division 1 next year so without beating on paper well not on paper but technically one of the top one of the eight highest ranked teams shall we say you know I don't know has that ever been done before where a team has won an All-Ireland without beating a team that will be in Division 1 the following season but um, no, all that, I do expect um, Dublin just to have two more I think Mayo though it's probably if you think about 2016, 2017 and 2015 and 2013 even those four years like when they played them, they were very, very close. The Mayo bet them in 2012. Like, so, like, is the Mayo team now any worse than what it was then? I, I'd argue it's definitely not, especially the one from, from three years ago. And is the Dublin team as strong as it was then? It's hard to know. I, I, I think we don't know anything about Dublin, Jerry. I really do. I don't think they've been tested at all yet. And I think that, I think Mayo have a, have a chance. They have a better chance than they might have had in other years. But I do think Dublin should just do enough to claim their sixth success of Ireland. I think um, <clears throat> probably if Mayo were to, to have a chance, it's going to come down to um, what sort of a day Colleen O'Connor can have. Obviously, he had a massive day in the semi final and he's had a few big games, a um, few big performances um, throughout the championship and that there. Um, do you think Dublin will have something specific in mind for him, or do you think they'll just do very much be a case of playing their own game? I think Dublin probably played their own game, but a bit of both. They don't, they don't really give too much away into the inner work into the camp. But to be fair, Jerry, Mayo are not a one-man team by any means. And Mayo have good players all around the park. They have a better team. They probably are, are a better team than they might have showed other years. Even when they were getting very close to win North Ireland, they were always susceptible to the odd loss in the Connacht Championship or the qualifiers or whatever it was. You know, So they probably have better players than they get credit for. And like, you're looking at the likes of Aidan O'Shea, even there's a, a very good footballer with Lee Mark. And you know, you have, Dermot O'Connor is a good half forward. Like Tommy Conroy is playing great football in the full forward line now. You know, the, the likes of obviously Kane O'Connor, Paddy Durkin, and Lee Keegan are two of the best defenders in Ireland. You have David Clark is a brilliant goalkeeper. Like, so Keith Higgins is, I don't even think he's starting. He's a brilliant player there. Like, so, so, there's a lot of strengths in this Mayo team, and they won not Ireland under 21 four years ago. Like, so they're not a million miles off the mark at all, to be honest. You know, and people probably thought Mayo they might be going away, kind of, especially when they got relegated in the league. but Probably not the case, and I don't think they're ever going. I think Mayo probably have enough players coming through now where they can be a top, even if it's a top five or six team every year. Do you know, like, but like they do really. Um, I think Mayo. I suppose having said that, they probably do need to live in the present as well, and this this match is absolutely vital for them. You know, on the other hand, but 
I do think that Galway will be kicking themselves. They could have easily been here. Like they, they, they didn't really get a fair crack of the deal with the whole COVID and COVID. Their own team affected and the team that went to play a side goal. And they kind of went into the kind of final a bit cold against Mayo. And there were a few points down at half time. They lost by a point. It was a bit of a cynical foul at the end from Mayo trying to stop Galway. Could have got a goal. And I suppose, Jerry, the way things worked out in hindsight, you definitely would have fancied Galway to be t- have beaten Tipperary in the semi final. Do you know? So they were really, and they really, really unlucky not to be in a final Galway. They, but Mayo got over that, and they beat Russ Common. They, they had a few. They, they haven't had a bad performance in the championship. They've beaten, they've beaten um, Leisham in the first round. They beat Tipperary, and I suppose then they beat Russ Common in Galway. But they're two Division One teams next year. You know what? Like if you look at it, like um, like both of those teams, they, like the, Russ Common bet Mayo last year in, Ch- in the final championship, and Galway had beaten them was the previous three years. Like so, it wasn't like they were always going to win those games. You know, like so. They've certainly shown improvements. They've shown consistency, Mayo. And I don't know. I have a sneaky feeling that this could nearly be the year that Mayo do win it now, especially with behind closed doors, the uh, with pressure. And I do think Dublin will win it, but I do think it'll be a much much closer game than people um, people expect. Um, just now you mentioned obviously about the, the fact the game is behind closed doors. I was reading a, an interesting some interesting comments. I think it was Kieran Whelan. Um, was saying that he thought that the fact that the game was behind closed doors um, would help Dublin um, because he his comment, his take on it was that whenever um, Dublin have in the, in the final the last couple of years, it's been a big focus about getting the five in a row and he was sort of thinking that like sometimes in the first half of these finals they've been kind of struggling a wee bit to kind of live with the um, that live with this for our expectations, but like I like what person from a personal point of view, like I was kind of thinking, like is it maybe, is it that, or could it be just that, like so many games, like certainly in the last two championship, like Dublin can can afford to be in first or second gear and be be 10, 15 points ahead, you know, in the at halftime, whereas you know whenever they're playing Kerry, they're playing Mayo, or they're playing at their own. Um, you know, they they are get like they're still all ultimately better than them, and they still go on and they've won these titles. But you know, it is a, a far far more difficult opposition. Or do you think there is a mental thing to it to it that uh, that has been causing sort of a wee bit of first half troubles for for the Dubs? I don't know, uh, Jerry. To be honest, I think sometimes the whole behind closed door, whatever that can be a bit overblown out of proportion. All this, like I think home advantage. Certainly, with is an advantage to the Dubs, and I suppose they're not negating home advantage with the match in Crow Park. Like some players get tribe off the crowd, and they really enjoy it. Some players would be the opposite. So I'd say those things probably do balance themselves out. I think that I'd say it would probably benefit Mayo more than benefit Dublin, like not having the whole eight. even for things like I'm not saying suggesting, but even like a referee decision. Sometimes the home crowd can really get on a rest back, and they can get the breaks and something like small things like that, you know. But even off, I, I do think that what Dublin might benefit, like maybe will the will the travel be as luxurious down there? Are they coming by train or whatever, like with social distance, like you know? But are they going to be staying in the same rooms? I, I, I don't know. You have a few things that maybe go under the radar a bit, like those longer journeys are maybe more difficult in the pandemic. But look, I do think that's all overplayed. But I, I do think, no, not having a full stadium will 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 benefit. Will will probably slightly hurt Dublin event. I don't think they'll, I think they definitely won't benefit. I think what might they might benefit a small bit more from is maybe not having the pressure of going for five in a row. So they might be able to play a bit more off the cuff football. Maybe I'd say that might be slightly more what they'll have. But I don't think that the fact there's no crowds there in a sense will make a huge difference to Dublin. But a lot of things like dressing rooms like are you able to use them properly? That might affect Mayo a small bit more like if they're going a long journey they could a few different things like that could, could could make a difference. But I don't expect any of that to have a major impact to be honest with Jerry Joe. You know? I can like my, my sort of whenever I was reading it, I kind of felt that it was like almost a wee bit sort of mischievous from him, you know, or like he's sort of like, oh, you know, like it takes the pressure off and all this here and be able to play more relaxed. But like to me, I I don't think there's there's even a chink in uh, Dublin's like mentality, you know, like you don't win five in a row, you don't win, you know, go all them times. It's not even like they won five in a row and one or two of them they sneak through the back door, like you know, they've just been completely. Dominant and and almost every match, you know, they, they were they were won comfortably, and um, there was a few obviously that were difficult. But I thought it was just kind of, you know, Weller was just to get his name in the name in the headlines. You know, he needed a comment and he needed to do whatever. But I don't, I, don't, I personally don't think that um, the, the the fact that there's not going to be a crowd is going to be of any you know significance to um, to Dublin or help Dublin as such. Um, as you say, you know. It's not. It's not like we're not accusing anybody of cheating around there, like anything like that. But 
whenever you, if you're standing in the middle of a field and you've got 70,000 people shouting for something, it's going to, you know, you talk about it in boxing and they, like a home boxer has an advantage, you know, because people are shouting for punches, you know, that maybe didn't even land right. But, you know, you just, you start to question it. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I do think it, um, I do think it has an impact. Um, I think from a, from a personal point of view, I would, and I'm not even, like, I wouldn't even, like, say that I want Mayo to win the game, but I just want it to be competitive. I want it to be like sixty minutes on the clock, and you know, sitting like I, rem- I remember, like there, there was one of the finals between Mayo and Dublin. It was, it was well, I was in, I was in Spain at the time, so it must have been either like sort of three or four years ago, whatever it was. And uh, like I remember it being like possibly even in the stoppage time, Mayo were ahead, and you know, and it was like it was a real nail biter, but. Um, I just, I just don't, I just don't have a feeling that it's going to be like this this time. Um, I think we've lost, uh, we've lost Connor there for the moment. Um, we'll see, we'll see if he comes back. But um, there he's back now. Sorry, Jerry, they, they, I couldn't hear you there, so I said it was better to to leave and try and rejoin. Yeah, no, no problem, no problem. Um, yeah, so it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of the game. Um, there is. Is there? Am I right in saying there's a there's an underage final as well on and before the the, the big game? Yeah, it is Dublin and Galway under twenties, and Dublin are actually going for three big football wins this weekend because they're in the ladies football final as well on Sunday, and they're going for four in a row ladies titles. So Dublin are really, really, really dominated at all age or in all age groups and all codes since the new Gaelic football at the moment. To be honest, but look, sure, that's for another day. But I suppose. The key for Dublin footballers this weekend is to, I suppose, this is what they've done. It's just to ignore that outside talk of advantages, resources, money, whatever, you know, and six in a row and just focus on their own battles. And I do think, Jerry, to be fair, I used to think Dublin lads were a bit robotic and a bit kind of, I won't say boring, but superhumans and awful. But I was just, even at the start of this year, I was at a few college Sigurds and Cup matches in football and I was at a few in Dublin. And Dublin players would be whatever way in for trainers just there. And, I don't think they're like that, to be honest. They're not. They're not that type who are just uh, robotic or to be honest. They're actually quite very normal people who are very, very good at what they do. Do you know? Like, I think that they don't seem to get involved in the media too much. They don't really give much away like that. You know, and I think because of that, people kind of think that they're robotic, but it's not really the case. And to be honest with you, either, they're not really living like they're not really all these millionaires that they're hyped up to be. Like you know that kind of way. Like so, I think that's one thing I would say to be to be fair to them. I think that the fact they didn't. Um, they didn't give much away. It was kind of it's people kind of maybe got the wrong impression. And they're not all complete boring individuals either. Like they're not all just robots to kind of drill, and train, and do nothing else. You know what I mean? I just think that there, there, there doesn't seem to be enough. I don't know. Sometimes people to get very cliche and everything. They kind of just think they assume that those people like that are have no personality, no life, no whatever. And it, it probably, to be honest, a lot of the time it probably couldn't be further from the truth. You know, like to be honest, sure, you know. Well, the the thing the thing is, you know, like there's obviously, you know, like like what they've done over the last five years has been unbelievable, you know, and they're probably going to a very good chance, obviously, of winning here. They're, they'll be strong favourites to win on on Saturday evening, um, to get that the sixth in a row. But you know, as you say, like it is easy to point to all the thing, you know, all the reasons why people don't like what's happening, but at the same time, you know, there is they've got more pressure on them than anybody else. Um, the management, the management job, like so, some, like I, I always make, I always make the point about Dublin is that like if you're not, like if you're the Dublin manager, your job's not to make necessarily make these guys better footballers. It's it's nine times out of ten, it's you know dealing with the fact that you've got a guy in the team who would probably be the best player in thirty one counties in Ireland, not getting a game, you know, and then you're having to deal with that. You're having to deal like like I would imagine. Like there's guys there, there are probably 30, 30 guys or whatever it is at training, and and they all think that they should be playing, and and in any other team they probably would be playing, you know. So so it is, it's a different job, um, for what they have to do. But um, you know, you can't you can't fault them at the end of the day. Like I've I've said on here before about all the stuff you know I don't agree with, um, but you know at the end of the day, whenever it comes down to it, you know you've got fifteen lads on the pitch, and seventy minutes, and they just they just win all the time, you know. It's it, it's a it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do. Like you know, whenever you've got so many, and 
you know, you win one and you've got a target on your back. So, like, what's it like after you've won five? You know, it uh, it is um, it is what it is. We, Mayo have got the chance to try and to try and win it. Um, I think for Mayo, I think they're probably like. For me, there's there's no honour now at this stage in Mayo getting to an All Ireland final. You know, it's like right, well, we've been in two or three, we've been in four, whatever we've been in. We need to win one. Like, you know, the Mayo needs to win an All Ireland. You know, it, it's like they, they, these great teams, these great players, and you know, like going back and like you look at like the teams. Like I remember the teams like Kieran McDonnell and all, and um, Mortimer's and all that. They are, and you know, they were all good teams, but they didn't win one. You know, and this team is an opportunity to do it, and. You know, I think until Mayo finally get that, get that All Ireland, you know, there's always going to be question marks. I think, Jerry, you're. I think the more they were training, they've lost ten or eleven finals since they since they won one in 1951. Like, so it's really, really um, a tragedy. I suppose top of this curse, and people would say they couldn't be cursed, but they've had so many moments over the years where you'd nearly think that they could be a curse, like a ball bouncing over the bar and two own goals and doing you know, that kind of way, and like I just all of these different things and variables. But look, sure. I suppose the Mayo players won't be thinking about that. But I suppose I'm just doing a bit here, John research. But I didn't like Mayo. There was Pat Holmes and Noel Connolly were the joint manager in 2015. And they were kind of voted out with player power in a way. They kind of didn't, Mayo didn't like them. And those have done a good, relatively well on paper, what looked like a good job after one year. But it was actually, it ended up being a bit of a soap opera. They, 14 months later, then those two managers gave exclusive interviews after it. But Mayo, it's great interest around Mayo football. It's great. It's nearly. I won't say it's a cuddle, like, but it's really, really got taken off like all over the world with Mayo fans. It's a big, huge county kind of with links to everywhere in the world, you know, like, and it's really, really a big interest there. And, and look, they would love to get over the line. But I just do think, Jerry, just one more thing about Dublin there is that they have a huge population there. And I think, to be fair, a lot of that, that game's development money was designed to increase participation in the areas. And it kind of succeeded in that. And that's probably a good thing, as it was, no matter what anyone says. It's good that people are playing the games from an association point of view that there is interest you know that kind of way and like just to go back on that it's probably done work too well where they have had so many people participating and maybe playing decent skills close being well ran that it's led to Dublin just having an, an endless stream of players coming through at the moment shall we say you know but I do think it's maybe a small bit unfair to criticise funding for that because it's a good idea that, that it is good the game is growing but I suppose people think it should be growing everywhere else, which is very, very understandable as well. Do you know that kind of way? Like so, but I do think that if this is going to be maintained and more areas of Dublin are going to grow, like there's going to be more areas where they have how many thousand kids that aren't playing, then long term we're going to have to look at something here because I think that it's going to be very, very non competitive if that continues with those trends, you know. So but look, I I don't think that having loads of people playing the game in Dublin is necessarily a bad thing at all. I think it's actually a very, very good thing that the participation is growing, but as I said, I, that, that can often lead to maybe maybe less and less, it can lead to complete Dublin dominance, shall we say, and that's, that's not what, what people want by any means, you know. Okay, well, um, hopefully, and it is, uh, obviously the game's Saturday, five o'clock, hopefully, you know, we get a game where they have the, uh, the, the final game of the season, the All-Ireland final. Um, just before we go, I'll, I'll ask Connor to, to give his prediction. To, I'm presuming Dobbs, but by by how many? Yeah, um, I think Mayo would stay in it, but I think they'll give them a game. It'll be tight down the home straight. But I think if Mayo can get close by the second water break, they'll be in with that for a chance around 54, 55 minutes. But I think Dublin will just do enough, and I think Dublin will be Four, I'd say Dublin by five, Dublin by five points, shall we say, by four, four or five points. But just say one more thing before we cut off uh, just the Westmead, their ladies, Westmead ladies are in the intermediate order of final and best luck to them at the weekend. They're playing Mead and also Westmead minor hurlers are in the are in the Leinster minor semi final against Offaly. I think it's it's Saturday, so best luck to them as well. So best luck to both of those Westmead teams this weekend. Yeah, uh, good luck to the Westmead teams and also. The Antrim minor footballers are playing. I think it's Monaghan on. Uh, I think it's Saturday. I seen um, the the school the league goes to St St Louis and Ballymena. I think they've got nine on the panel. So good good luck to them um, as well. So, um, but no. So my thanks as always to Connor. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping there's going to be a good game at the end of the day. If the Dubs win six in a row, the Dubs deserve six in a row. You know they they've been brilliant. They have been fantastic. Nobody's laid a glove on them this season. I just want a, a competitive game. 
Um, you know, the, we didn't really get a competitive game of sorts last week in the in the, the hurling final. So hopefully this one's a wee bit uh, a wee bit closer. And you know, may the best team win on the day. Um, so thanks to Connor, thanks to everybody that's watching, and uh, we'll hopefully be back on Monday. Um, to, to talk about you know hopefully a hopefully a great game of great game of football. So thank you everyone.